Well, I think it was about 33 years ago that I had my first psychedelic experience. Um, and that was with LSD, and it was on the same night that I met my wife. And as I explained before that, I was pretty much of an atheist or agnostic, uh, and I was searching for philosophically for some meaning to life and was feeling fairly rootless and existentially pathological, I guess, in some sense. Uh, and... I kind of was crying out for spirit to reveal itself, and I got a double dose, basically. I got to meet divine love in the flesh in the form of my wife, and I got my mind completely uh, switched on with LSD. Uh, it was a like a spiritual rebirth canal for me, uh, I was in the dark and going toward the light in a spiralic kind of tunnel. That was the main vision that I saw in the LSD uh, state. And um, it was unlike every other LSD experience I've had since then, you know, in that it was so focused on this tunnel and going through it. But um, at any rate, it did introduce me to a, a higher light. And at that point, I saw that uh, that love and spirit was the sort of underlying reality, uh, the underlying fabric of reality. And I wanted to uh, point my art toward that and bring people to uh, a familiarity with that because that's, to me, it was the most satisfying knowledge and uh, sense of identity, you know, that I could, I, I felt healed by being in the presence of, uh, of infinite love that these tripping states could allow. So, for me, that, that uh, since I was an artist, uh, that meant that my art had to be focused on that. And so the, uh, the mission of art really grew out of the um, me not finding uh, a contemporary art criticism satisfying in terms of uh, empowering the artist to find uh, their own mystic core and make art from that sense of what's real. You know, the trajectory of contemporary art is quite often looking at uh, one style transition to the next, and we get a lot of focus outward, you know. In America, the, um, the last hurrah for spirituality was probably a handful of the um, abstract expressionists, you know, Mark Rothko. Uh, Jackson Pollock, and um, uh, some of those folks uh, were intending to make their art uh, experienced uh, from a sacred frame of mind. And although they weren't psychedelic, they did open up and expand the boundaries of art and what was possible with art. Then uh, came pop art. And that was pretty much focused on corporate culture and the uh, veneer of uh, a kind of shallow but omnipresent uh, advertising medium. And uh, it pointed to the kind of uh, shallowness and obsession with materialism that uh, consumer culture in America has really been the... Um, has has brought into the world. You know, that's still continues uh, what America represents. America represents a kind of consumer culture obsessed with um, wealth, fame, uh, the externals, which are 
really uh, impermanent and uh, are driving the uh, um, the planet to a state of uh, collapse and a web of life and uh, so it's important at this juncture in the human story to re-examine our values you know and uh, I think that the entheogens because they point us to the God within and to finding our interconnectedness with all beings and things is a uh, kind of crucial set of insights, whether you take this substance or whether you get right with spirit, however you do it, by any means necessary, really. We have to come to a sense of the sacredness of life, preserve what's left of the web of life, and um, kind of get off our obsession with uh, materialism. Uh, you know, I mean, that's... That's basically what any mystic would tell you from any uh, age. But at this point, because we're um, wrecking the planet, uh, it's even more crucial for humanity to wake up to it.